Hello friends, I hope you're doing well. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about new drugstore products. There's been that start of the year flood of brand new things of all kinds, really, from palettes to lip products to face products. I've definitely got several new foundations that I'm gonna be trying. Just so much to wade through, so look at this video as one chunk of that new drugstore stuff. And all this came from Ulta. I will link to everything below as I always do, but I'm gonna start off with this primer. This is from Milani and it's called Chill Out and you guys know how I love anything cooling. This says soothing primer, wild oat extracts, and ceramides, silicone free. Some of this stuff I have been playing with just a little bit. I didn't want to come into this totally like with a complete lack of info for you, you know? Um, but this feels so smooth. It's interesting, they say it's silicone free, but it does have the slip of that kind of a primer. It's called Chill Out, and it does feel kind of cooling when I first put it in my hands, but by the time I rub it in on my skin, I don't really get that sensation so much. I think the neat thing about this is um, that you feel a little extra moisture, but you also feel really, really smoothed out afterwards. The foundation that I'm gonna use today is actually a powder foundation. I'm really eager to see how this works in its full capacity. This infallible freshwear, 24 hour foundation in a powder, full matte coverage, waterproof even is in the claims on this. I have the shade True Beige, but if I'm gonna do that type of thing with my look, I start out with some concealer then. And I did go ahead and get this Ulta Beauty Under Eye Brightener. This is the light to medium shade. There were two options available. And today is my first day trying this. Um, yesterday I was wearing the Infallible Powder, but I was just wearing it like a powder over another foundation, so I thought, let's just give that a shot on its own. Uh, first reaction, this stick feels super dry. If I didn't have an emollient eye cream on right now, I'd be really like fearing for how I would ever blend this. Wow, just a lot of pull across the skin. Um, the tone, we are getting that light peachy pink tone. It's crazy how thick and kind of dry it is. Like I'm not sure I could blend this with anything other than my finger just because I need to apply that kind of pressure and really like warm it up some. I feel like I'm pulling at my skin to get this blended in. Could have been so good. I was really looking forward to a nice stick format corrector, but even where I did like target some darkness there, I'm not seeing a lot of results. I need some coffee. New concealer from Wet n Wild. I saw someone raving about this on TikTok already. I'm like, oh dear, there's a new concealer. This is the Mega Last Incognito All Day Full Coverage Concealer. I got it in the shade Light Beige. So let's play with this here and just really kind of rely on this as our main concealer. This tone is gonna be more along the lines of a skin tone match for me. Um, when you're looking online, you're trying to figure out where you're at online shade wise. Sometimes it can be really hard to determine German. Got a little like lip zit weird, but that's fine. This is going to be a good shade, I think, to give us really our best shot at good coverage. Sometimes you really need to match. So I'm going to take my little Real Techniques guy that I like to often use. It's a highlighter brush, but it really handles concealer well. And I'm going to dab over this and hope for some really amazing coverage. Um, I'm not hating it. It's seeming pretty good. To be honest with you, the whole time I was blending this in, I was thinking, is it really any different from Elf's Camo Concealer? And I'm really not noticing a lot of difference. In fact, I might add just a little bit for coverage. It's You can tell there's a thickness to the texture of this concealer that may be like their last concealer, the one I just decluttered, the Color Icon whatever concealer. I remember that seeming a little thinner. And this, I think Wet n Wild just wants to have, you know, one of those zap it all out, crazy good coverage concealers in their line. I wouldn't mind like maybe one shade up from this, something that had just a little more brightening going on, but I'm not mad at it. Like I said, this concealer has a little thicker texture. Um, I don't think it looks drying or anything. Then again, I kept the application minimal, but I'm not seeing anything like going above and beyond um, e.l.f. Camo Concealer, if that's one you're familiar with. Next, I got uh, yet another translucent powder. I feel like I'm just loaded with these kind of setting powders, but I couldn't turn 
worn this one down. Instant Wrinkle Blurring Pressed Powder from CoverGirl Simply Ageless line. It says with hyaluronic and vitamin C complex. And I did play with this a little bit yesterday. The texture is incredibly soft, okay? So it's not one of those real firm powders where you hardly pick up any. So let's use this to set the under eye and get everything as prepped as we can have it before we go in with that powder foundation. Uh, it's tempting to want to go all over the skin once I get this brush in my hand, but let's just stay here. Oh, is it blurring wrinkles? I don't know, guys. I, no, it's not because I'm seeing more wrinkles now that I just powdered over that concealer. Yeah, very questionable. I mean, I think it may be a little bit blurring if you used it all over. I thought it looked better on the skin yesterday because I like wore it everywhere. And in that sense, like it was kind of nice around the nose, nice around the larger planes of the skin, but it's not something where you're gonna load it on the under eye and be like, wow, amazing. All right, who's ready for a little powder foundation action? Now, L'Oreal is home to the True Match Press powder, which I love and I think is capable of being like a powder foundation. But this, you know, they're giving it all the claims. Full matte coverage, waterproof, 24 hour wear um, and it is really soft to the touch. Yesterday I did think it looked beautiful on top of a finished foundation look but it's really soft. I'm trying to decide if it feels different from True Match. Let's check. True Match feels just as soft honestly and they both kind of give off the same amount of powder, like when you do a little finger swatch. And what does it come with down below? You do have a sponge here. But we're gonna use um, a brush that I think is really the best for powder foundation. If you have anything that resembles this BK Beauty 105, um, it's really thick and dense and big, and it just really does good, even powder foundation. So I just stamped it. I just kind of rolled it in my product there. And I'm gonna start buffing it onto the skin. Like I got some bare minerals or something. Pick up a little more. Kind of focusing in on half the face here so we can assess. Okay, is that full coverage? It's not full coverage to me. I mean, if we're comparing that to every liquid foundation that claims full coverage, I'm still seeing like a little under eye darkness. I'm still seeing freckles, even like little bitty light ones. Some coverage, yes. Not saying I don't like the way my skin looks, but even like there's a little redness kind of around the nose and the cheeks. That should be something anything claiming to be full coverage could tackle with ease. I don't think this is doing anything more in this capacity than regular True Match would do. I said it. I think it mattified. I think it gave me probably uh, medium coverage all over the skin, but pinpointing certain areas, like really trying to get that redness, trying to go over some darkness. I do feel more evened out, but keep in mind we did have the help of concealer and stuff under this too, and I'm still just not feeling like I'm in a totally full coverage place. I feel like it's been a bit of a bumpy ride so far. Next up, I could not hold back on this, this Physicians Formula All-Star Face Palette. Um, love the packaging on the outside there, and then what they've done on the inside, um, they've marked several of these as limited edition. They've given you all these different face powders, so the Butter Bronzer, and then there's a Matte Minoy Butter Bronzer. The Rosé All Day Petal Glow, that's like a highlight. There is a press powder up here, the Multicolored Press Powder. They say that's limited edition, but that and also the Mineral Glow Pearls were like early products, so was this one. But maybe they just mean it's back for a limited time just in this palette. I love the Happy Booster Blush, and that's probably why I drifted toward this palette. Um, but what was so disappointing was the Overspray. I experienced the other day on this one. If you were to buy this product on its own, it wouldn't have that. Um, it would actually be in itself like a shimmery product. You wouldn't have that wearing away. So that was kind of a bummer to see, but you're gonna have scent overload when you open this up because you're gonna smell all those butter bronzer scents coming through, but also the rose in with it. So if you wanted to just use like a little translucent kind of powder all over the skin, you could use this, but since I'm already all powdered up, I'm gonna move on to the bronzer. I know that the regular butter bronzer, while it's usable for me, it is um, a little on the light side. This doesn't seem incredibly different tone-wise. I wish they would have maybe gone a little bit different because yesterday I was bouncing between the two and I thought, wow, two really similar bronzer shades. It would have been nice if in one or the other they could have gone dark but I'll use this one that's labeled matte. 
and it's got a very, see that like light tan, warm kind of tone to it? You can really see it there before I get it blended out. Not my fave. And that's not to say it's bad for everybody, but it's just not my favorite on my skin tone. On my skin, I always feel a little more satisfied with bronzer when it ends up being like a little bit deeper shade with a little bit of reddish undertone in there. A little cheek contour. So see how this is, yeah, capable of giving us kind of that contoured look. The tone is just, you know, just not a love. I'm going to get a little bit of that and just kind of dust over the top here. Give us a little bit of a sun-kissed vibe. All right, have we ever been more ready for the blush step to come along? Let's go in here, and you may notice I've got a little crack there. I had, gosh, I had cracks in several different things from this Ulta order. They really need to try to ship a little bit more safely, I think. That's kind of a bummer. That's a really pretty powder there with the hearts. I remember loving this one. I wore it yesterday, and I was like, oh. It's kind of brightening. Um, you do, if you go over any area that has that brighter pink heart, you're going to get like a lot more color. So pretty. I could see that working for so many people and it just kind of would vary depending on how much you concentrated into one of the pinkier areas there, but I love that. Lately I've been trying out a little different highlighter brush. This is the Sigma Soft Blend 40. So it's kind of like, I don't know, really delicate feeling, but um, a similar size overall to the Moda Highlight and Glow that I used to use. And I'm going to dig into this one further in the zone where actually let's dust away some of that oversprays are so annoying one of my top makeup annoyances um let's swatch what's underneath here what we have underneath is not quite so like blinding bright and it looks a little more buttery still not as golden as the one beneath it but you see why they do that like the classic product used to look like the overspray but it was that way through and through you know okay i'm gonna get a little bit of that on here i know some of this is the overspray showing a little bit of that got on my brush i mean it, talk about making things impossible to review you have to talk about the temporary nature of the overspray and whether or not that's getting in with your look, which it definitely did filter in there. And then what's the product going to be like with more than a few uses? You know I love any kind of greatest hits type concept with a brand. I like when they dig back in. They highlight some things that have been like longtime faves. I think that's cool, but I do not appreciate that whatsoever. I think the bronzer, they should have varied that a little bit more. And I'd also err on the side of maybe two blushes as opposed to two different highlighters. This powder being in here I think is a good thing because it just gives you a basic powder. But um, yeah, this one's a little disappointing for me. I'm going to spritz on a little bit of setting spray. This is again my aloe sage and orange blossom from Mario Badescu. You know, I would say if you've recently used up your Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist and you like the scent in that, kind of reminds me of the smell of this. I don't have any new brow things, so I'm going to breeze through this just for the sake of time with my e.l.f. Lock-On um, Brow and Liner in Espresso and my Wow Brow in the shade Deep Brown to set. interested to see how this um, powder foundation wears today because right now like at this point we've got it all finished off you know face wise we've got our blush and highlight and bronzer and everything um, I'm feeling like the skin looks actually great like even though I had some complaints about particular things in that palette like everything really came together for a good look. And it's not so much that I'm like mad about the coverage of this when I was saying, oh, it's not full coverage. I was just trying to hold it to the claim that's actually on the packaging, you know. Personally, I don't mind that it's not like completely blanking out my skin with a big powdery veil. And if it stays well, great. But it really did have the same feel as L'Oreal True Match Powder. So if you hear people raving and raving on how smooth and wonderful this infallible feels, remind them. They've had something in their line for a long, long time that feels exactly like it. 
Okay, we are primed and ready, and this is the eyeshadow thing that I'm going to be using today. It's Milani's new Gilded Terra palette. Outer packaging is just gorgeous. I love those tones, and then on the inside, um, I just couldn't stay away from this color scheme, and it looks like a lot of what we have in here is going to be smooth, um, is going to be fairly easy to work with, but the fact that we had the greens and the purples and the warm browns and the gold, I just I had to go for this one. Um, um, also, I will be trying some of the new Wet n Wild stuff that's come out, so stand by for that. But for now, I'm going to start with this shade over here called Road to Nowhere. You can probably see some of the colors that I experimented with yesterday. I did kind of a greenish, soft green pop on the lid with some of the rosy shades in the crease. But um, this shade called Road to Nowhere looks like an exact match for my shirt color, so let's go for that. Looks like I would call this shade Rosy Brown. The shades in here are really soft. Um, I would say tap off the excess. Some of these Milani palettes have been a little hit and miss for me just because I felt like at times they throw in textures that are just like kind of off the wall and fussy to work with. But all of these, even though some of these look really metallic, they seem nice and smooth. So here we are with this shade that's just a nice standard medium color to start building up. If you don't like warmth, this may not be your palette just because there is so much warm brown. Alrighty, I think I'm going to heat it up a little bit with the shade Slow Burn right up here, another matte. More of just a terracotta. Okay, and I'm really letting that shade just drift upward, really using my space that I have between the eye and the eyebrow. And now I'm going to take just a smidge of unplugged, which seems to me maybe just a pretty bright off-white matte, and that kind of helps smooth everything. Now I'm really wanting to um, try out this shade down here called Believe, um, only they spelled it Belief, <laughs> this dark forest green. I'm kind of liking the 15 shade spread here. I think it's big enough to give you quite a bit of variety, actually. Not overwhelming, um, a little bigger than some of, you know, the more teeny compact things some brands are doing, but I do, I do like it. Picking up some of that shade, tapping off what looks like quite a bit of excess right back into the pan there. Ooh, that really is showing true to color. Okay, I'm proud of that shade. So often deep colors can just end up looking kind of murky. That really is showing itself. Nice. I'm getting just a little into the crease. You may have seen I just flip my brush there just so we could have some continuity of that shade. Picking up a little more, I just kind of rock my brush back and forth into it and then I'll tap off any excess. This is probably the deepest shade in the palette. We do have like a darker brown, but I mean, this is really the richest. I don't think I've experienced any fallout yet on this look, so that's good, but I have been pretty careful. When you see that a shade is pretty deep and capable of being pretty intense as you put your brush in, I do think it is our obligation to tap off the excess if we want to protect ourselves from fallout. Okay, I'm thinking it would be nice to take something warm or something maybe even a little bit purpley or pinky and just kind of go over that crease. Maybe with the Sigma E27 Detail Blending Brush. This is the mini E25 that I'm loving. This shade called Good to Grow right here. I think I'll go into that even though it has some shimmer. It's a little plummy. And as it shears out, like I'm not seeing a lot of purple come through, but I'm hoping that it just helps blend. This I might call the merger shade. You know, you're trying to merge a different tone with like some neutrals that you just popped into the crease. You're trying to make that green make sense. I feel like I'm blending away some of the green. Like it's not really clinging in there. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I feel like I need to amp up the green. Let's do some Like a Moss. Great shade name. Got a little shimmer. The thing about some of these shimmers, and maybe some of the mattes as well, is I wonder about their ability to really cling and last. Because there's a lightness to them. Like, for example, when I just swatched Good to Grow over here, so I got some of this purple on, and I saw the color, and then I kind of wiped it away, I was able to so fully dust it away with like zero cling into the skin. So there's a lightness to these textures that I'm not like crazy about. Let's try, what, what happens if we use the green that way? Okay, we swatch it. 
Does it just, you know, a really rich matte would be hard to just wipe away with a dry hand, you know? So that may be kind of the response to blending that we saw there, where we brought in a blending brush and it sort of took some color away with ease. Let's see, what are we gonna do for a little splash of color? I wanna try one of the golds. Wipe off my brush and let's go over here to glamping. Looks like it's got a lot of potential. Ew. Were we in focus for that? It, did, it didn't do, it didn't do much. Let's try some more. Kind of flaky. The other gold is not so flaky. This one, why am I doing a pinky application? Hey, <laughs> yeah, the pinky's not so bad. Control. I'm trying to load up that glamping shade, but it's just, it's just looking flaky. I'm gonna go over it with Weekender, which is the more like metallic gold. I hope glamping is the only shade that's like that in here. I think it is. A little more yellow than I was thinking of having in this look, but okay. So this is Weekender. I bet that would be fine with a brush. Not mad at that color. I mean, that was able to come in and basically save the look. Now I think I'm gonna go in with a pencil brush and we're gonna use our dark green again and just take this on the lower lash line. Maybe use that on the outer part and use like a moss going inward. It's interesting what Milani has done with these textures. You know, they've definitely found something that looks pigmented and is blendable, but it doesn't really adhere that much to the skin the way some things would. You can't probably even tell the difference between these two shades, but one has shimmer, and that's the one that I'm kind of like edging in here. Okay, I'm gonna pop on some liner for this look. I'll just use my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof. I'm adding just a little bit of my dark green out here now, just to meet up because I did a small wing. Curling the lashes. And then we do have a new mascara that I'm trying out here. It's the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. Thing is, I don't remember adding this to my order. I don't know if I got this for free. Maybe this was some kind of perk that came because I got the powder, but I really don't remember ordering this. But it came, so we'll use it. It's got a curved brush, kind of a thick looking traditional bristle curved brush. I wore this yesterday. I wasn't really upset with the end result look, but it took me like probably three coats to get where I was really happy with it, you know? So here's like one coat's worth going on. Adding some length, some definition. You know what I want. I just want a little more volume than that. So it took going back and forth a few times. So this, this may be a bit of a process here. Set two reminders today for noon and 6 p.m. What do you want to be reminded about? Makeup check-in. I've just set two alarms on my phone while I was thinking about it there um, to do check-ins on this look because I just really want to follow up on how well the powder foundation wore, what the concealer's looking like with some wear, these eyeshadows. Like I did a look that I thought was all right with them yesterday, but I really wasn't looking back at how they were wearing late in the day. I got into an organizing project and I mean, when I start organizing like a closet or a cabinet or whatever, I mean, I'm one track mind, my friends. I gotta get that done, get it done quick. No messing around. So there we are with the lash. Um, I feel like it's okay, but it just took way, way more building than I normally wanna do on a daily basis. I will do just a little bit of some Thrive on the lower lashes, just cause it has been wearing well for me there lately. Not smudging. Now moving on to the lip. I have several new lip products that I'm gonna be playing with, but the one that I'm gonna use today that seems to be most like workable with what I'm wearing and stuff and the rest of the look is this from Catrice. It's the Powerful 5 Liquid Lip Balm. It says Hyaluron, Vitamin E, Shea Butter, Green Tea, and Goji Berry. Liquid Lip Balm. So you know I need to see what that's all about. It's got a regular doe foot applicator. I've not used this till right now. So let's see. Mm, very like barely there kind of just general makeup-y scent. I don't feel like they tried to make this real scented. Feels kind of thin, and I do see some sheerness in the color. Like I'm kind of seeing through ultimately to my own lip color. Add a little more. Normally wouldn't do that, but I'm trying to build a little. Um, it feels fantastic. 
actually. As it went on, I thought, gosh, this is gonna be too thin. Is it gonna be greasy? As I mush my lips together, it feels like incredibly moisturizing, like really, really good. The color makes me feel a little bit unfinished. I don't know what to say. Nude, but yet, kind of sheer. I'm wondering about taking a little bit of a lip liner. This is just one I had close, the Jessie James Decker, that nude lip liner from her lip duo. It may not adhere real well at this point. Yep, should have done this first, but I didn't know. Most definitely the kind of thing I would be open to trying in a, some deeper shades just to see like how much color I would truly get. It feels like buttery, but there's a little cling. I think with just a little bit of wear, this would probably feel just incredible on the lips as it just sat there a little bit. But my lips feel like drenched in moisture. I'm not sure how to explain it. doesn't feel annoying. Um, it just feels like a really nice formula. I just like to see if some deeper shades gave off some more color because just wearing this and this shade alone is not really my personal preference. But yeah, guys, there is my finished look. I mean, I would say overall what I'm most pleased with is probably just the complexion, which was interesting considering it was built on this, basically. And I do think it provided a good foundation for the look. And then we went on top of it with those Physicians Formula face products. You heard my complaints on that palette. I'll be watching how the Incognito Concealer wears, but I felt it covered pretty well, but I don't see it going above and beyond other drugstore full coverage concealers concealers that I like. I feel like I've run into a handful of products in this video of like from the powder to the primer, the mascara. Um, well, this I really didn't like, that brightener. Um, I just thought that was way too dry, but some things where it's kind of like, they're okay, um, take them or leave them, sort of. I'll play with them some more, but they're not really wowing me. And a really, like I said, kind of peculiar formula here from Milani because they managed to look pigmented and swatch pretty, but with a lot of shades of those intensities, you would have trouble wiping them away. And these just, I worry about their ability to adhere. But yeah, I got my timer set for some check-ins, so I will see you guys in a little bit. Six hours of wear. Um, I feel like the eyeshadow, the colors don't look quite as pure as they did, but they're still there. Um, sorry if I have some pizza sauce in my mouth. Um, tortilla pizzas for lunch. The rest of the coverage on the face also seems lighter. Like while it all looks more one with the skin, it doesn't look quite as matte as it started out. You know, that powder foundation. It looks like super light in coverage. It doesn't seem quite as even as it was at the start of the day. That being said, I'm not seeing fallout. I'm not seeing flaking from the mascara and the lip is totally gone as you might expect. Impromptu makeup staying power check-in. I feel like I preferred the... Oh, hi! How's your makeup holding up today? Beautifully, as always. Nice dimp, by the way. <laughs> the powder is seeming to be like shearing out and the under eyes are looking nice and dry, so. Going on a little nature walk out here at the pond. 12 hours in, what I'm noticing is some fading by this point, like on the eye makeup, especially if I'm just looking at myself really up close in a mirror. Um, I can just see so much. Gosh, that light looks way bright. <laughs> it's not really that bright. I feel like I can see just some smudging down below the eyes, some detensifying elsewhere around it. It does seem like the mascara has stayed on and not budged, so that's good news. The skin just has that, you know, like when makeup wears down and it wears down pretty uniformly, in that sense, if your skin's I don't know, decently even underneath. You might not notice any glaring problems and it might not even feel as bad looking to you as if you just had, you know, a real full coverage product that was just really wearing down hardcore on a couple areas and then by contrast, it looks worse. I don't know if any of this is making sense, but um, what I have going on here is I feel like a full face, just wear down of product because again, it was a powder foundation. It's just very light and I don't know, a a little bit of the look of, oh, hey, bub, how's your makeup wearing today? Under the eye, you know, a little bit of settling there, a little bit of, I don't know, it feels pretty dry, honestly. I was out on a walk this afternoon, spent a decent amount of time outside, so that does dry out the skin. The lip did fade pretty fast earlier today, but it felt really nice while it lasted, I gotta say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again soon. Bye.